this team, again, a very, like, we're talking about, we're talking about a team that there has not been a ton of adversity, right? <laughs> like Andy Reid, you know, to, you know, uh, you know, your friend Scott Pioli was the general manager, took the team to the playoffs in 2010, won a division, uh, you know, didn't quite work out that way. They, they chose a quarterback in Matt Castle who wasn't, you know, who wasn't everything he was, you know, thought to be. And so he gave way, Pioli and, and Todd Haley, Romeo Cornell gave way to um, uh, Andy Reid in 2013 and also John Dorsey. And from there, I mean, Andy Reid won his first nine games as a chief, and it really hasn't looked back since. And, you know, that I think, you know, as the Dorsey years went on, they built a great roster. Justin Houston, Tom Baha Lee, you know, Jamal Charles was there for a while. Then it was Jeremy Macklin at wide receiver. And then it was Chris Jones. And it was, you know, they built like sort of the rock. They drafted Tyree Kill in round five. And, but they were always kind of a, a, an arm's length away from the Super Bowl, right? You know, you, you they they got a two seed one year. They lost to Pittsburgh after the bye. And you're just kind of like, this team with Alex Smith, who's a great story, great guy, great human being, is not going to get over the hump, right? And so, you know, Brett Veach scouted Patrick Mahomes. Andy Reid really loved him. They really made that move very similar to the one you made for Julio Jones when you were trying, you know, year after year after year to try to get over the hump. They said, okay, we're going to, you know, and, and I was actually on the radio talking to my buddy Saran Petro. I'm like, look, they should get Patrick Mahomes. And this is when I thought he was a bottom half, half of the, the first round guy. And they're like, well, what if you have to get to 10? Which was prophetic because they had to trade the 27th pick that year. They had to trade a third round pick that year. Um, and they had to trade the next year's one to go up to 10 and get Patrick Mahomes. And for, you know, they've hosted every single AFC championship game since then. So, you know, what, what can you say about that sort of move where, because you've been in that chair, you've made that move before for a wide receiver, but you know, somebody who's a hall of famer, you've made that move for a hall of famer before. What can you say about like that, the boldness it takes to go up and get a player like that and, and to really change the complexion of your franchise? Look, I, I think I mentioned it before. I mean, it starts with ownership. I mean, I love their ownership. I love their approach. I mean, through and through, we talk about, you know, Andy being there as the elder statesman and, and a little bit of the fatherly figure to the general manager who get along really well. Let me just say quickly, back to giving your team major kudos. They've had some really, really good football men come through there. I'm talking about Scott Pioli. I'm talking about John Dorsey. Those people are good football people. They know the league they know their world. It may not have worked out for them the way that we wanted it to, of course. But this comes back to, to me, starts with ownership. And we can talk about that for a while. I, I, I know I've mentioned before about the trifecta with an owner and a, for Brett Veach, an owner and a quarterback and a quarterback. Sorry, an owner, a quarterback and, a, and uh, you know, a general manager, a head coach. That whole group together is really, really big, of course, and important how you're, you know, to build. And, and I remember... Um, spending more and more time when I was spending time with Brett Veach and, and talking to Andy Reid about their relationship. Andy had such respect in a young guy like Brett Veach to do what he needed to do and, and build it and provide the way that he needed to provide. Um, I just, again, I can't speak. I, it's one of the coveted organizations out there for most of us that have background as, as general managers or as team leaders and any of you rising executives study the Kansas City Chiefs and how they do things. You don't always just have to take it from, from our, my buddy here uh, on the left side of the screen or right side of the screen. I mean, Eric's going to have a strong feeling, but he's right. This is a really good franchise and really well built. And when you can get an HC and, and, and a GM who work in consort and understand the direction. Um, they, they both have their opinions, of course. But the great thing I've seen is Here's Andy taking a guy that's that many years his junior and trusting the heck out of him. That is a big thing. It's not about butting heads on, you know, on, on uh, you know, uh, egos. And that can happen very often in our league. So I don't want to go off too much here, but I, I'm just so impressed with how they approach it uh, from a just a building and a management uh, standpoint. And again, it starts with the owner. Well, I think you know that, like, you know, you, you're my boss, right? You, you know this from, like, but there's, there's an aspect – that I so I contrast this a little bit with Kyle Shanahan with Andy Reid. I think Kyle Shanahan is such a genius that, and, and there are some geniuses that really like like when you think about quarterbacks, they like the guy that 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 paints within the lines, right? That draws within the lines, right? And because they're they're tracing out the best picture ever. That's who I think Kyle Shanahan is, and I think that there's tons of value evidently in that because they they're continuing to be successful. 
when I look at Andy Reid, I think of somebody who you were Brett Favre's quarterback coach, and Brett Favre was not coloring in the Brett Favre's an artist, right? And and so to to mentor an artist is going to be a lot harder than in some ways than to mentor uh, somebody who you know colors between the lines really well. And then Patrick Mahomes is like the quintessential you know Brett Favre you know clone from 20 years later. And so there's so much in my opinion. I think value to what Andy's done to get him in the fold. But then, and this is where he, he tugs at my heartstrings a little bit, the mentorship, right? When you look at all the people that Andy Reid has coached, Sean McDermott to a head coaching position, uh, Doug Peterson to a head coaching position, Matt Nagy to a head coaching position, and then back when he when he fails in Chicago, there is there's so much. Andy does a great job of promoting his own. You know, Eric Bieniemy is a finalist for this Colts job. Like I I, I just love that aspect of it. And then I'll, I'll close with this because I know, you know, uh, I actually I actually, uh, you know, from the Sumer Sports account, somebody said, you know, the the, uh, you know, the the uh, analytical models don't fully factor in Burroughs clutch gene. And then we have C-Dub who says there's no such thing as a clutch gene. So we have a little bit of battle there. And of course, we said at Sumer Sports clutch gene is Thomas gutting out this show from Jamaica. So like so we're 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 going to you know, we're having a little bit of fun here uh, in in the in the comments. But I. To close this, I really want to I, I really want to commend the Chiefs for showing the league the two phases of being a dynasty. The first phase is to get the quarterback on a rookie deal. This is the part that the Bengals are in. You get the quarterback on a rookie deal. You know the Chiefs signed Sammy Watkins to a big deal. They kept Tyree Kill. They kept Travis. Kill. They get Mitchell Schwartz into the fold to be a great right tackle. They build the the foundation around Mahomes, right? You get one Super Bowl during that during that four year window. Like now, if you're a Bengals or Chargers fan with Burrow and Herbert coming up for deals this year, you're a little disappointed unless you know the Bengals can get home this year. And then when they when when that window closes, when Mahomes starts making the forty six million a year, now you have to throttle back, right? And you trade Tyree Kill to the Dolphins. You spread it out. You 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 sign four wide receivers to do the job of one. And I think, and we're going to talk about this Monday when we talk about wide receivers, but like. They did such a good job of transitioning from going all in with the quarterbacks on a rookie deal and trying to win when he's cheap. Boom, boom, boom. Two Super Bowl appearances, one win. And then this year was really fun because they pulled back and they said, look, we're going to let the Bills sign Von Miller. We're going to let the Chargers spend a billion dollars to try to knock us off. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, and, and they trusted their quarterback. They trusted their head coach. They trusted their general manager. General manager trusted himself. And and ultimately, what you see here is fourteen and two, or fourteen and three, uh, and a chance to host another, uh, you know, AFC title game. Which, uh, you know, just as a, a fan of the game, even I, I find very cool, and I find very, you know, very uh, a teaching moment for everybody.